fantastic. So welcome. Um, if you don't know who we, we are, we are Ghanaian Londoners. And um, I notice uh, a lot of you that is first timers. So can I have a show of hands with first time? Yeah, go, go. Oh, wow. Can we ask, how did you hear about the event? Maybe. Facebook, you found it on Facebook. Were you doing a search or it just popped up? It just popped up. Oh, then my social media guy did well. Uh -huh. I, I need to pay him the rest of the money. I told him, I said, Master, Master, cut the thing. I'm not seeing the thing. But I'll tell him that, he, you know. Uh -huh. Who else lifted up their hands and what did they see? Where did you see it? I just searched on a website. Got name events and came up. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Good. What about yourself, sis? I was referred to by uh, Dennis. Oh. Oh, you're, you're Chantel. Okay. Nice meeting you, Chantel. Who else? On Instagram. On Instagram? Oh, well, did it pop up as um, a sponsored or how did it pop up? We got following you guys for a while. But yeah. eventually, I think it was. For how long have you been following us then? You said because for a while, but it looks like like today you just decided to come. So a couple months, a couple what? months. Yeah, but so what happened? Like, what, what made you want to come out today then? Couldn't give you a good <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyone else? I referred to my two friends. The two friends referred you? What, what's their names? We've been sitting down talking about how we, as um, black Ghanaian men, can come together and do something a problem. Because we end up talking about events and going out partying all the time, and before we need to stop that, so. I'll try to find a balance between them. Yeah. Um, um, as soon as they told me, I said, I don't care what you're going, I know you're going, I'm going to be there. So, yeah. I love your attitude. You know what? I should have some gifts for you, you know, for, for that attitude. Maybe I'll give you a copy of my book. How about that? Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> so, um, Ghanaian Londoners was um, launched in um, February 2009 here in London, in um, High Street, Kensington. It was a cold, cold day, I remember. And um, it was amazing, like, probably equal amount of people here turned up for it. And it was just essentially a dream that I had that um, why not gather Ghanaian professionals, entrepreneurs together to exchange ideas and how we can use the ideas to better ourselves here in the diaspora and take it back to Ghana. And I'm, I'm heavily inspired by um, our first president, Kwame Nkrumah. So Kwame Nkrumah, for those that have followed his story, actually lived in the UK for like a good, um, I think, two years or so. But then um, whilst, whilst he was here, he was, one, he was part of one of the major movements, um, a congress, um, Pan-African Congress that took place in Manchester. So immediately after the con Congress, he shot off to Ghana, and 10 years later, Ghana gained its independence. So that, that conference was all, you know, had like top prominent people there, and they all talked about demanding independence. So um, the next thing, the next level um, for, for us after we've got an independence, how many years now? 60 something years, right? Okay, good. So I think the next chapter for us is um, economic independence. We're not economically free, I think. I think that there's so much that we can do with our resources. So I'm hoping that, you know, gatherings like this, networks like this, talking about business, talking about opportunities can really get us um, to the next um, level. So we're going to go straight into having our guest of honor come up to say a few words. Um, but before I say that, before he comes up, um, Papa Corbatels is very supportive of what we do. Um, he's been with us through the summer and now we're entering autumn, winter, and he's, he's still supporting us. Um, he works at the Ghana High Commission as the head of trade and investment. So if you need anything to do with business, um, opportunities, anything that to do with Ghana, I mean, he's, he's got his office um, doors wide open um, um, to, to, to welcome you and, and to plug you in. So, um, Papa, if you're ready, we are ready for you for a short address. Ghana needs help. We are, we are headed somewhere, but we need the needed expertise, the know-how, and all that to push it. Even more important, is not just the know-how, but the do-how. Know-how is, is, is having the knowledge. But the do-how is the most important thing because it helps you to implement. So tonight, as you stand here, and I've already seen people interacting and all that, 
I want you to look at Ghana, look at the UK, and then say we're going to drive some FDIs into Ghana. Ghana is literally a service, you know, <laughs> base country. India is the same. But the difference between Ghana and India is that we literally do buying and selling, and therefore we are shipping out FDIs. Whilst in India, they are drawing the FDIs into India. Whatever profession that you have, whatever knowledge that you have, whatever you've acquired here, you don't need to be in Ghana, but you can contribute to Ghana. The development of Ghana is important for you and I. Without further ado, I'm going to welcome up um, our next speaker. Right, he was one of the early adopters when social media first started out. He had the brand King of Trainers before JD Sports. He can share his little situation he got into with them, with that brand. And he was one of the first people in the UK to get to 100K followers on Instagram. But without further ado, let's make some noise and welcome my brother, Franklin Botang, AKA the King of Trainers. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll explain why they call me King of Trainers. Um, my mum loved um, tennis. So in 1985, um, Boris Becker won the Wimbledon Championship. He had an Aless clothing deal and a Puma footwear deal. And um, my mum would go out to buy me what the tennis players wore. So her buying me what the tennis players wore, I had all the best trainers, myself and my sister would go to the shop and say, Boris Becker wore this, Audrey Agassi wore this, and um, she'll get me it. So my nickname in school was King of Trainers, yeah? Um, fast forward, um, I went through a situation where JD Sports also used King of Trainers, they tried to take me to court um, over the name, and um, <laughs> I, I, I took them to task. This is the, the, the quick version, because I need to get into other business. I took them to task, and I actually won. So when... Um, yeah, so, so, so when you, you go to JD Sports and you see um, undisputed King of Trainers, undefeated King of Trainers, they're talking about myself. So basically, um, straight out of university, I studied visual communication and graphics. I knew that I didn't want to be a graphic designer um, based on the competition in, in the market. So I set up my own company, which was um, two companies actually. One company was a, a work experience agency because people in graphic design needed to have a lot of work experience. So I tried to help people get work and stuff. Um, and then I, I set up um, a graphics company called Fabs Graphics. So I was doing that for a number of years. Um, by doing that, I stumbled across becoming an, an, an installer. So I had an installation business. Um, and uh, installing multi-gyms and treadmills and things like that. And that's where I made the majority of my money. This is in the early 2000s. Um, by, by doing that, I was, you know, I, I spent a lot of money when I was younger. I'd done everything you do. You buy the watches, you buy this, you buy that. And then by investing in property very young. So um, I bought a few properties. My whole thing when I was younger was I want to be a millionaire before I'm 30. Um, that's all I cared about. I was like, I want to be a millionaire before 30. I want to be a millionaire before 30. And then I'd done it in property probably about age 27. Um, and then he lost it by 29, but I'll get into that. I'll talk about, I'll talk about that. Um, so, um, you know, when I had my installation company, I had, I had vans, um, I was installing multi-gyms for the rich and famous, the um, American embassy, the American ambassador, um, the old um, Pakistani prime minister, I used to do all their multi-gyms and, and service them and things like that. So I was doing all right in my early 20s. Um, and then the credit crunch happened, you know? And all my contracts went, and I was like, I had my vans and everything. So I was thinking, what do I do with all these vans and things like that? So I sent them to Ghana. Um, and myself, my sister, my mum and dad, at the time, we set up a, a bus company in Ghana. And this was before it was oversaturated and before the trotros became really bad, <laughs> you know. So we had four Mercedes um, um, long wheelbase sprinters in Ghana going from Accra to Kamasi, Accra to Kamasi. Each um, bus was generating over $100 a day in profit back then. So that works out great, four buses times the month. We were making about 12,000 a month um, back then. The unfortunate thing, and this is the, the problem with Ghana, is you have to be there. 
or you need someone you trust. So I'm happy that the people who, you know, the sponsors that we came before, they've actually said that we can go to them. And Papa, is he st he's still here. I'm going to take his number because I want to speak to him about a few things. But what happened was we, it was a Kratz Kamasi, Kratz Kamasi, long, you know, long journeys. But then my cousins we were paying them the equivalent of what doctors make in Ghana. They tried to dupe us. So my uncle, we have, um, uh, my uncle lived in Domi, in Accra, and um, he, would, he would take the buses at night and hold the buses. Then, what my cousins would do, because they know that they can say, they go to Kumasi and say, oh no, duh, we, we, are, we are waiting overnight, you know, to, to come back in the morning. What happened is one of my aunties phoned my mum and says, oh, well done, yeah, you set up a, a Kumasi route, because our buses were very unique. This was before it was oversaturated. Our buses were called God's Way. It had a very unique color and, and things like that. So my mum was like, oh, we haven't got a, a Kumasi route. It's just across to, across to Kumasi. What my cousins were doing, were well, they were doing a Kumasi nighttime route and taking the money at night, you know, and not giving us um, the money which caused the buses, unfortunately, to fail and break down. So that, kind of, that business kind of fell down. And then, you know, we lost a lot of money there. But in the process of that, we managed to build our, our houses. So we have three houses in Ghana. But then during that time when it was going through the bad time, I, I was losing my contracts. I was doing, and I nearly, I nearly lost all my properties. So I actually went back and I looked at what I loved the most, and that was like things like networking, social media, and things like that. So I set up my own social network called Fabs Network. By doing so, I had a website. It was like Facebook. Um, I had 5,000 members, a million hits a month, and I was doing okay. And by doing that, I was l teaching people about social media and how I promoted my website um, and doing seminars and things like that. When I had that, I had um, um, a forum on it called King of Trainers Forum. And and then my friend said on Twitter, Nike don't just do it, and that's only possible nothing. Why doesn't JD Sports speak to the real king of trainers? That's when we went through our, our dispute. I, I want, it's a, quite a long thing, so I won't talk about that whole thing now. But put it this way, I won. By winning, I jumped onto Instagram pretty early, and I started to be the um, number one um, individual news platform in the UK. So back in the early days, I was posting 20 pictures a day, um, like for, for, just for just every day, I was posting 20 pictures about footwear news. Yeah? By doing so, before I'd done that, I said, I want to, you know, my, my love is trainers. So I said, I want to be the, want a big sneaker blogger, etc. I wrote to all the companies, Nike, Adidas, Puma, Reebok, everyone. They all ignored me. I said, okay, well, I've realized in business, you can't tell people what you're going to do. You have to prove it. So that's what I did. I, um, I set up this blog and I started to go, go, go. Um, like um, my junior said, I was the first person to get over 100,000 followers. By doing so, all the brands started to come to me and say, Franklin, we're going to send you this pair of trainers. We're going to send you this pair of trainers. And, um, and at first, I'll be honest, I didn't even do it for that. I just done it to show people that I'm able to kind of create this, this thing that I'm, that, that I'm trying to create and become a personality. By doing that, um, all the brands um, work with me. And, um, and now I get paid to post on Instagram. The good thing I can say is, is I've just signed a contract with JD Sports and they pay me to post on Instagram too. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so. You know what I mean? By, by also, by also do, um, working hard, I managed to secure um, in July, of, well, I actually designed it in 2019, but in July of um, summer just gone, I managed to launch my first collaboration with Aless. So these are the trainers that I'm wearing now and the tracksuit, I designed this, this whole collection with a less and, it was, and we launched in Selfridges. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And we launched, we launched in Selfridges and sold out in Selfridges um, over summer. Um, so, so yeah, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping to actually take this collection. I'm, you know, unfortunately, my, my father passed last year. We're going back for the one year in December to do you know, the headstone and things. So I want to do um, an, a pop-up shop in one of the, the malls in Accra. I'm trying to get my cousin to sort it out, but you know how family is. So I'll see, hopefully someone here can, here can help me. Um, but, um, <laughs> yeah. So I want to take a few of the pairs out there to, to um, bless my, my Ghanaian brothers and sisters. Um, but you see, my journey in, in business has been up and down. You know, I, I, like I said, I became a millionaire in my, 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 my late, mid to late 20s, and I nearly lost it by, um, by 29.30. Um, but being in business, one thing I, I can say to you today is consistency is the cheat code. 
one thing I've always done, and people who know me or follow me, who you know, um, they know that I'm so consistent. And my consistency has led, you know, with my personality of King of Trainers, now I have um, a chain of CBD shops with Rapper Retch Free 2, which we may be actually selling soon as well. I have, um, I've helped bring back, I don't know if you guys know Averex um, jackets. So I, <laughs> you know Averex, yeah, I like that. So I, I, I helped bring back um, Averex. So we have an Averex shop, I have an Averex shop in Box Box Shoreditch. I also have um, a store called Retro, which we're the only, um, um, Co company, well actually in London at the moment, that do what you call dead stock um, sportswear. So we have stuff that vintage shops have, but it's all brand new with tags. So it hasn't been worn in like, you know, 20, 30 years. So that's what we have now. So if you are around Box Park Shoreditch, come and, come and visit me and, um, and I'll give you guys a discount. <laughs>
Sawyer Bean on your behalf. I'm going to leave you 10 tips um, on how um, I believe um, could help you in terms of doing business in Ghana. Number one, um, this is my tips. It might not work for everybody. Some people have gone different routes. Number one, I personally believe um, you shouldn't quit your job in the UK until you've kind of got a good setup. So six months savings behind you to go out there and go and start business. Number two, packaging. Everybody in Ghana likes packaging. You know, you don't have any, any, anything, but you have the packaging. <laughs> you have the car, you don't have house. Packaging. One thing, branding. Let me put that in English. Branding. Everybody in Ghana is important branding, right? You know, you might not necessarily have the best product, but if your branding is on point, it sells. Number three, build relationships. I think we all know that Ghana is about who you know. So go out there. You've been networking. Agile's created a great platform for you guys to come and network, uh, speak to other people. It's about who you know. You know, and that works in two ways. It's about who you know to be able to get out there and connect to right people, but also to build your own reputation, right? I can go to somebody and say, oh, I know Adwa. It works in my favor, you know? So it's all about who you know. Number four, understand cultural nuances. For example, in Ghana, rain is a very valid reason for people to be late to work. It's worth coming to this event, like even if you just experience it once, I think it would be worthwhile. I found it really great. Um, I got to reconnect with members of the government. Um, I got to learn about Ghana, the opportunities there, um, meet the diaspora and hear from them about what the experience of doing business for them has been like um, in Ghana. And um, it just brought Ghana to life for me a bit more. I feel like I understand the country, the culture and the opportunities. My nickname is Fab's Network and I believe networking is an integral part of business. So this is a great place to network. You see all the people from different parts of business networking. If you miss this event, you have to come down. Please, all the Ghanaians everywhere in the UK, even if it's in London, come from Manchester, come from Birmingham, come from Newcastle and come to this event. It's, it's, it's a really, really good place to be. Um, follow the Instagram. Um, it was G G GH Londoners. Yeah, I'll say follow the Instagram and follow any other future events that you can grab because like there is so much value to gain from just being in this kind of network um, and you can go much further when you have people with you and surrounding you and have been places that where you want to go. From tonight's event I got to know people from insurances so that's very good because you indeed need to have an insurance when you're building there. Uh, networking because you meet people that are connected to your project.